Hey there, it's Brian Sebastian. This is Movie Reviews and More. And if it's Tuesday, it's always Giving Tuesday. Always give to your favorite charities, whether it's a charity, foundation, St. Jude's Hospital, Dream Evil Arts, Doctors Without Borders, anything. It is, you don't have to wait till once a year. And obviously, we're streaming on over 100 outlets, as usual, around the world. K4HD, TV radio, Talk for Media, Talk for TV, i 247 out of Franklin, Tennessee, Women on TV.TV, Worldwide TV Network. And I've been waiting for this show because it's always about, oh, I've got to mention Country Box. Jimmy Adams would be upset. Country Box, it's about boxing because we have someone who is in that world of boxing. So if you're in Nashville, Tennessee, it's going on right now at the Trooper Door. Country Box, where music meets boxing. So again, with all of this, I've been waiting for this show because I've never talked to this young lady before. And I call her young lady because she is. And she deserves that. Uh, she usually has red hair, but it's purple for some strange reason. And I'm sure she'll tell us about that. But it's one of those things, you know, our friend Vlad Uden, you know, I love his documentaries, always about the fitness world, the hardships that people go through, what it's like to be in that world of bodybuilding, fitness, to be that speaker and everything like that. Very, very important. But they never show you behind the back door all the trials and tribulations that people go through. And so with that, I'm going to introduce her because, Christy, this is the show you get to brag about yourself. I don't care what it is. I like it. So when it comes to that, she's a speaker, motivational speaker, entrepreneur, author. She's that fitness guru. She was number three in the world when it came to the boxing, one of the most dangerous females. And I've interviewed Layla Ali, who's a friend of ours and everything like that. Uh, but you know what? She's done a lot of things. And, and I will go through more stuff, but I just want to stay with that. But I got to talk about a co-host first. So from Houston, Texas, the one and only, that influencer, that dapper chick, Chef Rachel Roberts, because now she's doing a lot of things. And for some crazy reason, Howard Wiggins, his internet is going out because he doesn't really have internet. But it's one of those things, yeah. we're not going to tell anybody about this. So Christy, until Howard comes back, talk about you. Let's talk about this documentary because it's not easy doing what you've done. And also, Pink says hi. How do I know? Because she's on tour when my friend Eve Gardner, her bass player, She's amazing. I like her. We were both at the Canyon Ranch in Tucson uh, working out together one time. But yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, the the documentary, I was just thinking of as you were talking, and it's, the, the you know, Generation Iron, they've done over 50 of these documentaries, and they never featured a woman before, and they featured me. And it's such a great film because it's about life and resilience and seeing it through the end and getting up every time you get knocked down over and over and over. And do I have what it takes to see this through to the end? Can I do it? So many things against me. I'm turning 48 this week. So many things against me. And did I pull it off? Well, Rachel was doing a nice little promo because you know, I don't do promos. I mean, we, we, we do good. We, I mean, we do well. We have 35 million views and counting, so we do well. But you can always improve on stuff. When you go to the gym, you can always improve on things. When, when, she, when Rachel is cooking, I love what she's doing because she's always improving on stuff. And I'm really happy for my friend. When Howard's doing his stuff, this is not how Howard looks. He usually has a beard and he's got a cowboy hat or, or something on. He's that Dapper guy. I thought he was George Michael when he first came on. <laughs> it was really, really funny. But Rachel, tell Christy who you are until Howard gets to sound. Go ahead, Rachel. Okay. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm, I guess I, I call myself a little chef, but I mean, I, I do so much more now. Um, I'm in Houston, Texas, and I, um, I have a morning show called Coffee Talk. And um, it's really exploded. And so now, um, you know, I have people that watch it all over Houston. So usually when I go around, people are like, coffee talk. And the Fox News is one of the guys at Fox. He became one of my fans and he contacted me. So now they call me up for to do stuff with them. In fact, I think I'm going to do stuff with them Thursday. Um, anyway, um, you know, I, I've, I've got the cooking, you know, it's 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 something that I was doing quite a bit and now i find myself doing other things so it's funny how we evolve and we grow i'm 50 you know i get you i mean you know as we, as women and we get older you know there's we always have a little room for improvement i feel like you know as i look back on the years i i feel like i look even better now than i did a year ago or you know the year before and i think with with working out and keeping our bodies in shape and eating eating clean, you know, it's a it's it's how we 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 do that. And so many people our age, so many women will just let themselves go, 
And so, you know, you know how that is. But mm -hmm. I was really excited to have to, to be on tonight because I wanted to hear like, you know, what, what do the celebrities do to, to, to stay? You know, is there some kind of magic workout that they do? Is there is one better than the other? I do a lot of this like boost Pilates. I do it like three times a week. And I really find that, you know, it's, it's going to kill me. <laughs> I'm probably going to keel over and die. But I mean, I really like the, um, the workout. And it's, um, you know, but anyway, I'm, I'm glad to be on with you. Yeah, that's awesome. And you asked a question, you said, well, which one's the best one? You know, it was funny. Um, the best one is the one you'll actually do. And nobody wants yeah, to hear that. In fact, so I, was, I, was, I was training <laughs> Katie Couric in New York and People Magazine, they found out and they called me as Christy. What is the magic? What is the magic pill? There is no magic pill. There yeah. is no, all the celebrities that we all know and that we've trained and all the people that we know and the circles that we run in, they are no different than us. They, yeah. they, they have to, they have to do that. They have to watch their diet. They have to do it. And really if Pilates works for you and you got a clean diet and you're staying in that range, that's healthy for you. 100% do it. It doesn't it really doesn't matter what people do. And it doesn't, it just takes, you nobody gets in shape from a hard workout. You get in shape from a bunch of little workouts back to back. Well, to back and to then back. I was going to ask you, do you like push the low carb, uh, no sugar, don't drink alcohol? I mean, what do you tell people when, when, when you, when you meet them and they're trying to lose weight? What do you, what do you, what, that's what I do. A code red is all about, um, low carb and no sugar. Yeah. So we eat, it's, it's based around real food, water, and sleep. It's the proper human diet. No shakes, pills, Intermittent diet. fasting. We don't say fasting because it's got so many uh, negative things attached to it. Everybody's got their own ideas. So we don't even use that word in the lifestyle. We have 10 basic rules that we follow. Uh, we don't eat late. We drink a gallon of water a day. You guys yeah. all, depending on where you were it, mm -hmm. right now, you have your water. Uh, and we make mm -hmm. sure we sleep every night and people are not nailing the basics. They want to get all fancy with their weight loss, but you can't biohack your way out of the Arby's drive through. So it, you yeah. really have to nail those basics. I find that if I don't eat after five, then the next, and you know, and I'm eating clean and I don't eat too much. The next morning, my scale will be, you know, happy. It's 100%. when I break the rules that I, you know, that everything is like, Bleh. It, and it's not rocket science. It's just, yeah. we all know that like it's uh, studies have backed that up. Eating past 3 PM is not good for us. And that is just right. a, astonishing for people to just, Oh my gosh, but it's just not I good. Know. We all know the basics. We got to nail those basics. We got to yeah. get the real food, water and sleep. Yeah. People always ask me, what are you making for dinner? I'm like, I don't eat after, you know, I, I really, I don't eat after three. I eat my, 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 you know, my, you know, healthy, big meal kind of thing, whatever I'm eating in the middle of the day, it's, it's low carb. I, I don't do sugar. I quit that years ago. And you know, the only, the only problem that I do have is I like to drink. <laughs> yeah, that's so, not good. That's going to catch up to you, Rachel. You got to be careful with that. I know it's so bad. And, but it, so I figured out that if I drink clean, meaning you don't add any, anything to it, just, just drink it straight. Mm -hmm. It's a little better, but still, yeah, yeah you're right. I, I'm, in fact, I'm, I did a dry January and it, I loved it so much. I noticed my body got so fit and um, I really liked it. My head was clear because, you know, at our age, we get brain fog. And so I think when my, my, my cousin boyfriend leaves the country for like um, a month, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. Yeah. It's a Again. great idea. Yeah. Hey, Howard, if we have you back. Tell her who you are where you come from before we lose your. I can only hear you a little bit. Every... Mm -hmm. Tell her who you and are. How does Howard. Howard stay in shape? He's got a lag on his end. Howard is our dancer. He he's always dancing. Like every night, he's he's out dancing. So I think that's how he does it. That's amazing. Seriously, Chrissy, how old do you think Howard is? <laughs> Man, I'm um, looking at him. Uh, maybe, gosh, maybe my age, maybe turning 48 this week. Yeah. Okay. So, how, and now Howard, can will he disclose his age? Because he's definitely not 48. <laughs> that no, would Howard, Howard is 70. Him. When he has his beard and everything, he looks just like Sean Connery. <laughs> he's 70. No. Funny? Are you, Brian, are yes. you serious? Yeah, yeah, he's 70 years old. Yeah. What yep. did she guess? 
She grows 48. 48. That would make you younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Howard, talk. Go ahead. Tell me who you are. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I can't hear it. Just talk. Oh, he's not hearing okay. us. Okay. He can't hear you, but hold up your not... fingers and put up 48 so he at least knows that Christy said <laughs> okay. 48. I heard you. Yeah. I heard 40. All right, Rebel, tell him to talk. Tell him to tell her, Christy, who he is. All right. Um, Howard, tell us who you are. Well, nope. This Howard, is not working. Can you still hear me? Tell us what? who you are. Oh, for some reason, it's not working. Hey, Rebel, tell him to come back. Come I'm back. 70. 70. Yeah. He, see, he got that out of his mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, he likes to dance. He's one of those people where he'll be out there dancing. Everybody comes to dance with him. Everybody, which is a great mm -hmm. thing. And he doesn't drink, and he actually does a great job. I'm proud of him. That's but, amazing. Christy, talk about this. I come back to that age of Tammy Lee Webb, Bun to Steel, Ab to Steel. She was one of my good friends. I uh, no, Kathy Smith, Denise Austin, uh, Jillian Michaels, um, Jackie Warner. You beat all of them in a different way. And that's one reason why I'm proud of you because of what you've accomplished. Talk about how you started and how you got your name for the audience and where you are now. I was raised very poor in the mountains of Northern Idaho. My dad was a cop and a preacher. We lived a very fishbowl life and we were very, very poor. And I was on a big ranch and uh, we learned at an early age, if we wanted anything, we had to, we had to work for it. So I bought my first horse for $500 at the age of 10. I made $50 monthly payments to my neighbor. I've just been working since I was young. And so when I graduated high school, there was no help for college. And if I wanted to go to college, I had to pay my own way. So I was bartending and waiting tables and I was in nursing school and um, I was taking a boxing class. You know, I had done a bodybuilding competition. I did terrible. The only thing I did right was I got a tan and I did my hair and makeup. I, I love bodybuilding, but I, nobody ever taught me how to do it. So I got on stage. I was not stage ready. I didn't know what I was doing. Later on, I took a boxing class at a local YMCA in Memphis where I was going to school. I was in nursing school. And so when when you, when I was, uh, when I was boxing, my first class, a, a boxing, uh, coach was watching me from the window and it said, how long have you been boxing? I said, 44 minutes. And he said, you have a propensity for this. And he goes, you know, you can fight. And I was like, pal, I'm not, I'm not interested. He said, you could earn money. And I said, I'm sorry, what was that? And so <laughs> I started fighting only to earn money, only to earn money. And so my first fight was coming up and we said, and someone said, Hey, you need a ring name. And my hair was red. Cause I've been every color. And I was so code for the medicals for medical that I was trained when I was studying red for my red hair. It just stuck Christy code, red nickel. I started fighting. I fought in 15 pro fights all over the world, two world titles, five knockouts. I've never been knocked out. And I had my own show on MTV. And so I just kept the old code red name going. Well, then I got fat. And I was like, nobody taught me that I was fat because I was mainlining Costco M&Ms and I, it didn't matter how much I worked out. So I created the Code Red Lifestyle, which teaches people how to lose weight without shakes, pills, diet foods, or exercise. And I created this multi-million dollar company. Like one of my products earned 10 million uh, it, and it was just doing, it just exploded. But I was on Idaho State food stamps up until I was 40 years old. Then my company exploded and it's a very cool story. Lots of books written, lots of things done. But then I let myself go in the summer of 22. And I was like, you know what? This sucks. I'm not, I'm not maintaining the level of excellence that I usually do. So I decided to get back on stage. Well, Generation Iron caught wind of that and said, wait a minute, you're going to get on the stage after over 20 years of competing. And I was like, I'm doing it. And I had injuries. I had this big company I'm running all these things against me. There's no way you can do this, Christy. I said, let's do it. So we decided to sign the contract with them. We decided to start filming and you're going to have to watch and see what happens. I mean, everything was against me. Society had written me off. You can't do this. It's the ultimate underdog comeback story. Let's take That's a look awesome. at this trailer. I'm so tired of this. What have I got? I hired a professional boxer. I heard about boxing. I started fighting just as a way to pay my way through college. I started winning every fight. Knockout, knockout, knockout.
You don't become one of the top three most dangerous on it by not busting your ass. For some reason, our trailer is doing something weird. But you know what? This is one reason why you have to take a look at this because it's what she went through. Christy, one of the things I've always wanted from my friends who go to the gym all the time, you never see the struggles that they go through once they leave the gym. That's what I always talked about. On the way, I can't wait to get to the gym. Once you're done, it's like it hits you. It's almost like that performer coming off stage. It's coming off that high, isn't it? Talk about that. Yeah, there was, it, there were times, um, and I'm always, I'm always, always transparent and honest and authenticity wins every time, which is why this film is so great. Cause you're going to see that. But there were times during this entire process where I, I might've thrown in the towel. If I didn't have cameras follow me, if I hadn't signed the contract, if I didn't have the world watching, I might, cause it's, it's, it's the grind. It is an un I mean, getting on stage competing at this level is just ridiculous. The volume, especially in the time frame that I had, which has not been done before. I mean, my coach says you need a year. And I said, I got six months to make this happen. And he was like, we can't wait. This has never been done before. So it's the behind the scenes grind that just putting one foot in front of the other that people just don't see that is absolutely, it will eat your lunch. I mean, you see the, 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 the makeup and the hair and you see the end results and you see the beginning, but it's the every day, every day, every day showing up when you don't feel like it. That almost took me out, Brian. I can understand the rebel. You want to try it again? I'm so, I'm so tired, tired of this. <laughs> What, what have, have I, I done, done myself, myself into? She is a retired professional boxer. I didn't know about boxing. I started fighting just as a way to pay my way through college. I started winning every fight. Knockout, knockout, knockout. You don't become one of the top three most dangerous females on the planet by not busting your ass. She's at a very low starting point. I said to myself, I'm going to compete in a Misfits USA competition. They started laughing at me. I have settled for being mediocre. So I decided to get back on stage. Nothing can prepare you for having to take off all your clothes and let it all hang out. This is what I normally look like. You cannot biohack your way out of the Carl's Jr. drive-thru. Look at his ass. I can't, I can't get, get going. going. I can barely keep my eyes open. I'm so tired. My body hasn't changed very much. The doctor suggested that I quit immediately. I'm not stopping. When you feel like you've got nothing left, you still have 30% in the tank. Are you telling me you're gonna leave my this school friend? Death is coming sooner to you. I'm back to going hard every day, every day, every day. That is how champions are made. Why did I agree to do this? I'm scared, I'm scared. Christy, when I saw this, and I saw it about, um, probably about a month ago, I was looking at, she's gorgeous no matter what. Because it's not easy getting back on there. And you were going through what most people go through anyhow. You just didn't know that because you were used to training those people and getting them out of that situation. And then you find yourself in that situation. Like most of the world, not fun, was it? No, and and that was a great part for me was um, being in that same spot and um, and going through with it. And I try to, you know, you I always teach my my community never forget where you came from and never forget what it feels like. And you do you forget how bad it feels, you forget how good it feels when you're on top of things. And so I was really I was really humbled by this experience, Brian. I was like, oh boy, I'm getting my bell rung every day. I'm getting. I'm just getting beat down every day. And it reminded me how it feels to get beat down. It, it was really humbling. Besides the camera. So what really kept you going though? I, 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 when I decide and 
I, I, I decided, I mean, I decided to do it just like when I went to when I bite, I bit my nails all my whole life. I've bit my nails. And about a year ago, I said, I'm sick of biting my nails. I'm, I just decided to stop. I had made up my mind. And I, I, when I make up my mind, that's it. And I'm not like, I'm an all or nothing girl. I'm a disciplined person. I am a person of excellence and everything in my life is at this level. And so when I made up my mind, like, let's do it, let's do something hard. Let's do something that's going to get me back on track. Let's get, you know, let's bring it up to here. Then that was it. That's what kept me going. I was never motivated motivation. That doesn't last. I was never motivated to do what I did. I have discipline. I have boundaries. I have my life set up and structured to succeed. And I don't let bull crap excuses. Someone else is going to have a bulk. A lot of people have these bull crap excuses. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I've had maybe five actual emergencies in my whole life. So people want to claim emergencies all the time. You really can do things. If you put your, if you, if you set yourself up for it and don't let yourself off the hook. You can really actually do it. And I just don't let myself off the hook. I, I have boundaries. I have things in place and I don't let people around me who are going to feed bull crap into me. I just don't accept it. I won't be around that kind of mindset or those kind of people. So I made my mind up and I, I wasn't about to quit. And it really, I mean, there was a one point, you guys, I ate food out of the gutter. Someone left an Uber Eats in the gutter and I was walking my dog one night and I was so hungry and I was so, I was just so deprived and I was so hungry and I was so tired that I went and ate a half eaten chili corn dog from Sonic out of the gutter. I mean, that's how desperate I got, but I didn't quit. I did some stupid things, but I didn't quit. We've all done stupid things. I haven't done that one, but we've done stupid things. <laughs> But that's also, that's you know Howard, what? What, what Howard talks about, things like that. If you want to change something around, you just do it. And that's Howard's mentality. Howard, if you can hear us, speak yeah, on it. I can hear now. I can hear. Yeah. 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 I, I, well, you know what? People that have it hard in the beginning of life are the people that know how to make it. And you never hear about people that like, I mean, even like, you know, really famous people that I said, well, you know what, when I was starting out, I was sleeping in my car and it's never the people that are given everything in life that, that, that really make it. They don't, but you had it hard growing up and you had that fighter in you. And so you knew how to survive and you still know how to survive and how to make it. I have a drug addict sister. I have two sisters and one of them is a drug addict. And she's been a drug addict for 25 years and an alcoholic. And it's so baffling to me that my the other the other two girls in our family have three girls to two of us. One of my sisters has two master's degrees and she's beautiful and smart and funny and she's awesome and she's a hard worker and she's she's smart. And then you got me. I've accomplished a lot. I'm a published author, all these cool things. And then you got our drug addict sister. And it's like we were all raised by the same parents. You know, what the heck? We, you know, and so mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. It's like when you're given everything and they really slacked off on her, they didn't make her work. They did not discipline her like they did. I think they just gave yeah. up by the third child. And, and, <laughs> and, you know, and, and now look at her, she's never accomplished anything. And, and the two of us have, so I agree with you hundred percent. Yeah. When you got that title of the, you know, the best trainer in 2008, what did that do for you? What did that mean to you when you got that? I, I don't know. I guess, um, you know, I've got some pretty awesome awards in, in my life and, and I, I kind of, uh, I think it's great. I kind of let everything go. I mean, I, I enjoy it. It's just like, you know, the, um, the, the, all the good comments online, all the bad comments online, I ignore the good and I ignore the bad. I let it all roll off my back. And when I got that award, I just kind of was like, yeah, that's cool. I guess I just kind of chalked it up to, I don't mean to sound callous. It's just that I really try to just not even think about all that stuff. I, I just take it all like, yeah, it's cool. You know, I've got, I've got a lot of great things uh, that, that I've accomplished and I'm super happy about that, but it's, it was, it was okay. I mean, the New York's best trainer, that's cool. I mean, I got secret shop, you know, they secret shop trainers all over New York and I got secret shop and, and then the, the tally, the votes came in and it was just like, she's amazing. And I, I think what makes me 
I guess, amazing or whatever they thought about me was just that I can relate. I can get on people's level. It's not that I knew some magic workout or that I'm a really great trainer on that. All that ripped or strong. It's that I can communicate with somebody. I can look them in their eyes. I mean, Katie Kirk tried to say that to me her first day on me. She said, we're not going to do that. I said, oh, you have no negotiating powers within the four walls of this facility. You called me. Don't come in here and start demanding things. Instant respect. Never question me again. And so I think that I can look someone in the eyes and say, I do not care care how you feel. Unless your leg is broken, I want three more reps out of you. I know you can do this. Knock it off. I'm not asking for anything unreasonable here. And they do it because you always have more in the tank. And so I think that's what made me that way. And, and getting that award, it was cool. It's just, you know, moving on to the next one, you know, the, the message is spreading. My message of hope and healing is spreading and all these things it just helps spread the message. If I were to get a, a really cool magazine cover, I just had a photo shoot this morning for a magazine cover. I think that's great, but my mind is on code red. How can people spread the message of hope and healing through real food, water, and sleep? And so my mind is not really on the attention I get. It's the attention of getting people out of the pain and the suffering that they're feeling because of obesity. Let's talk about something really important, your dog. <laughs> I totally understand all of that. You know, I'm, I'm being a chef here in Houston. I that's what I focus on. I have, in fact, I'm writing my own book. It's called Eat Clean, Drink a Little Dirty. But I mean, it's you know, and I talk about <laughs> right. I talk about how I garden, and and to, it's real important to grow things and and you know and, and eat these things and eating clean. Don't you know? Stop all the processed stuff, and you know, there's nothing that tastes better than something that you've made fresh. And you know, if you're pulling tomatoes out of your garden or fresh herbs, it's gonna up everything, and you're gonna find out, wow, you know, this tastes better than that restaurant crap, and and God knows it tastes better than anything you can get like at the, at the grocery store that's already, uh, you know, it's 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 amazing like how much better things taste when they're fresh. So yeah, I'm I'm all about and you got to drink your water. You're right. And plenty of sleep. It's you know, it's it's critical. I I definitely, you know what? I'll push you. I'll push your stuff every morning on Coffee Talk. I'll talk about it. <laughs> Rachel. Mm -hmm. Hey Christy, talk about the first time that you seen this. What was your reaction to the um the the film when I saw it? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I thought it was amazing. I mean, we had over three terabytes worth of footage. So that's what took, you know, we filmed for eight months and then we had to edit the film for another eight months. And so there was a lot of footage to go through. I mean, I can't believe the producers produced what they did. I mean, it was a lot to have to pick and pick through. I thought they did a great job editing. I love the way that they, I love the way that they sh talked about code red without selling anything. I mean, people will find out what I do. If they want my help, they'll reach me. I don't want to. I don't want it to be sleazy sales kind of thing. And they didn't want that either. I like the way they portrayed me as a coach. I like the way they stepped me through the process and the film and build up the story. I like the way they set up my childhood. Everything they said was accurate. So I felt I was sitting there in my living room. I have a, uh, I met, I live at the top of the best hotel in, in Boise, downtown Boise. I own the condo at the top and I'm sitting in my living room and I'm watching on my big screen and I'm just like, I couldn't believe it was really happening. I was like, this is amazing. This film is amazing. I was fired up at the end of the film. I was like, just ready. Like, man, what can I go do? Like, I wanted to go like Rocky and go for a run. It was amazing. <laughs> Do, what, so what do you give yourself as a tire? Are you more of an entrepreneur now? Would you say that's correct? Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely an entrepreneur. I mean, I, I started my own company and, and uh, I, I get, I get asked as for, when I, when I get asked to speak on stage, I get asked either for weight loss or for entrepreneur stuff. And I have a presentation I do called my top three rules from going from food stamps to 10 million. And so I, I like really love talking about business. I really love, I mean, I, sometimes, I mean, I I'm looking at different businesses and I just go, Ooh, what would I do here? How would I cut expenses? How would I increase profit margin? I mean, I'm always thinking, you know, so 50% of the time I think about weight loss and then 50% I'm always thinking about business. How can I grow? How can I sell my own sawdust? I'm always thinking about business and entrepreneurship. And we got to say hi to one of Rachel's fans, Gary. And Gary, we are going to talk about movies. This is movie reviews and more. Christy, when you have a relaxing day, do you read or do you watch movies? Because I know you work your butt off doing everything. I don't, um, 
I kind of don't have a relaxing day. I think a relaxing day for me would be, I have a second home, a cabin in the woods about two hours North and Hazel and I will go and walk through the woods. That to me, uh, I'll walk. I mean, walking is relaxing for me instead of running. And so I try to, if I take a break, it'll be walking, it'll be movement and it'll be walking through the, 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 the mountains feed my soul. The mountains rejuvenate me and being out on the trails, whether it be in the winter or summer or anything, I need to be out there. So that's my, idea of relaxing is getting out and walking with Hazel in the mountains, going for a hike. Would you go back and train certain celebrities now or you've got, you've done that and you moved on? Yeah, I don't train anybody anymore. I don't do anything in fitness. I just do weight loss and exercise has nothing to do with weight loss. You can lose all the weight no. you want without having to exercise. Yeah, so, yes. What you yes, eat. all what you eat. And so I don't mm -hmm. train people. I mean, I'm so out of touch with the personal trainers nowadays. Like I just, I'm a little bit old school, you know, I mean, I have a clipboard, they have iPads, mm -hmm. I've got a clipboard, you know, uh, and, but mm -hmm. I would be much better at this older age than I was before, just because I've lived more life and, and, um, that would be great, but nah, I'm not interested in, in that at all. No, I hear you. I, I agree. I mean, and that's why I mentioned, you know, I, I have Tammy Lee Webb coming up in the next couple of months. And I want to be talk about those abs to steal, those buns to steal, those 15 million tapes that she sold in the old VHS days. Remember those days? Yes. You know, they were put as a whole different world. But that training doesn't go away, does right. it? Right. Totally. 100%. It doesn't. And, and I get the outdoorsman because I'm like that, too. I don't want to be around a lot of people anymore. I've, I've become older, too. So I get what you're talking about. And yeah. so what advice would you have now? Uh, for people just starting those, I call them the, the, the Z generation zombies. Cause you know, they look at their phones all the time. They don't really want to go and do the hard work. What would you say to them? Cause you're straightforward. You, you're no nonsense. Yeah. You have to be no nonsense. There's too much BS in this world. What would I say to someone first starting to their fitness journey? Uh, I would tell them, pick something that you can stick with. You know, everybody wants to, you know, you want to do boxing, fine, do boxing. You want to do CrossFit. You know, it looks cool. You see these people look cool when they do it, but can you stick with it? Do you like yoga? And also pick, pick a, a, a workout that that actually matches up with your goal. If you want to, if you want to be a boxer, you don't need to be mountain biking. You need to be boxing. If you want to be, uh, if you want to do speed skating, you need to be skating. Uh, you know, you need to, your activity needs to fit whatever your goal is, but just freaking do something. It doesn't take much. You know, these, I'll tell you all these, all these fights, the fight night is never the hard part. It's the training. That's the hard part. And, and, and so all these little training sessions that people do, uh, they add up and consistency, 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 show up every day. Hey, Howard, do we have you in? Yeah, I can hear you. Tell her who you are and where you come from. I'm Howard Wiggins, uh, of Nashville, Tennessee. I'm son of Little Roy Wiggins, plays steel guitar for Eddie Arnold. And I've related to what Christy said because I used to weigh 100 pounds heavier than I do. And uh, I went for a six mile run with the girl at work and I was way overweight. And I thought, I'm not going to let that girl beat me. I'm going to I'm going to keep up with her. And I did it. And when I got through, I said, well, I survived. I could do it again. So I just kept on and I went down 100 pounds just like that. It was, it was very easy for me and I really never gained it back. Uh, and that's been decades ago. In fact, uh, Atkins came out and did an article on me in the paper. And uh, I tried to get in touch with him. I'm like, that's been about 20, 30 years ago. And it's like, I'm still 29, 32. So it's like, I'll show you, I'm 70. And I still got the same body I had before. So uh, it's all just keeping up with it. But I don't train as much as I used to, though, just because. But you dance a lot. You dance all the time. Dancing doesn't count. That, that <laughs> it does. It, you're, you're moving your body. It's yeah, movement. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Howard, and I try to do my exercise while I'm dancing. <laughs> the way you dance, Howard, you sweat. You, I mean, you move. Oh, yeah, you, you give you. You're 100. percent movement. Right? I'm telling you, yeah. that's all it takes. It really doesn't. Just like Christy was saying, it really doesn't take a lot. You know, if you if you know, just just movement. And 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 Howard, you you know, you're 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 dancing all the time. Yep, going next Wednesday to dancing too. <laughs> yeah. That's my right, Howard, talk about what you got coming up. Oh, I 
I got a movie called uh, Who's Going to Take Care of Me that's uh, coming up in Hollywood sometime. I've got one without warning. And that's uh, I play the father of a seven year old girl and my wife's about 40. So I'm trying to look younger for that. And then I've got I'm in a children's book and I play a rabbit over the hill and farther away. And I just did the voice for the rabbit last week. Hopefully that will be coming out pretty soon. So. So, That's Christy, it. now that now that you met two of the hosts, the other two, that Terry still, still she's claiming she's going to jump on, but she's still at the hospital. Now you talk about what I keeps you going outside what? of fitness. What, what keeps you going, Christy? What keeps me going outside of fitness? I got a whole world of people who are watching, and I tell people this. I say, even if you, if even if they don't follow you, they still follow you. You know, I got a lot of people watching me. I got a lot of people that are um, that are are driven and I hate the word motivated, but I'm going to say it because that's what people relate to. I have a lot of people who are motivated by me keeping going. And so even, and I, I have a bigger message to spread and my express, my message is what keeps me going. The brand is, is the brand is what keeps me going. And I, and, and I tell my coaches, the brand will always win. We, the, we live up to the brand and we, and I live up to the brand. I have an obligation to, to my, to code red. And, um, so I, I remember one time I was in, I would come off of, I had just come off a really big presentation. I was in the Delta lounge. This was years ago, the Delta lounge and it's Salt Lake city before they redid it. And I, I was emotionally eating and I shouldn't have been, and I was tired and I had a Danish and I was putting a Danish in my mouth and a man walks up to me and said, Christy code red the author. And I, I had Danish coming down my face and he turned his phone around and it was his wife who had lost like over 50 pounds in my program. And she said, my wife, she read your book. She's a big fan. And I got caught red handed shoving a Danish, doing the one thing that I tell people to not do. Don't soothe with food. Don't coop, cope using food. When food is fuel. We don't do that. And I was doing it. And I said right then, that's it, Christy. You can never do that again. Your brand is, you're, you will ruin, you will damage your brand if you keep doing this. So I conduct myself um, I, I conduct myself at a high standard because somebody's always, always watching. And I'm always making sure that I do, I do better because people are always watching and that's what puts, that's what pushes me forward. They're always watching. Even when you're not paying attention, they are watching. Yep. Just like you said, you turn around. I remember I was in a, uh, we were, we were, we were promoting, uh, the biggest loser for, uh, what was it? Bob Hopper and Jillian Michaels. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting next to Jillian. We were eating lunch and she walked up to the line because they had everything there. She's eating a salad. I'm like, Jillian, is that all you're going to eat? She goes, she turns around like this. I have to watch what I'm eating because people are watching me. I'm like, I get it. I get it. I won't say anything. I get it. So we went over in the corner and we ate. But, you know, it is that is the case. Yeah, you got to, I said, next time, Christy, you want to eat a Danish, you go up to the bathroom, you go into the bathroom, put your feet up on the toilet, because that's the only way you can't, you can't do that crap. And the real, the reality is I can't get away with that at my age. I just can't get away with the cheating that, um, that I, that I maybe could when I was younger. I feel like crap. It ruins the next day. I can't yeah. binge. It ruins the next day. That's just it. Yeah. It ruins the next day. So, I mean, it's like you're, you're cheating yourself. And it's like all day long, we work so hard and we're doing everything right. And then all of a sudden we're going to pick up a Danish and eat it. And then it's like everything that the, the whole day is just wasted. Now we got to do everything tomorrow and it's, it's, it's not worth it. Plus I find out it doesn't taste good after you give it up. I mean, once you give it up, it's too sweet when you do taste yeah. it. Yeah. I haven't eaten sugar and I don't eat, I quit sugar years ago. And so Same I don't crave it. I don't no. crave dark chocolate, soda, I don't eat. any of it. And so for those people that want to see this, because it's an excellent movie. So Christy, it's a gets the four E's from movie reviews and more. It's entertaining, it's educational, it's engrossing, and it's emotional. All the stuff that you went through. And Howard, I think you guys, you and Rachel have the same fans because your fans overlap. That's the good thing about it. But also this premieres, I think it's April 12th on Amazon, uh, Apple TV, Amazon Prime. And please check it out because Vlad has a lot of stuff. Talk about Vlad when you first met him. What was that like for you? I uh, I love Vlad. Um, you know, he's very New York. I lived in New York from 2005 to 2009. And uh, I, he's just so New York, you know, and he was just like, yo, hey, Christy, yo, you know. And I, he just, and he, and I tease him, I make fun of him, but I actually have a real good relationship with him, you know, and um, we, 
we've we've just really we've been really on the up and up with each other and we're very authentic with each, with each other. And I'm very direct with him. I think that they appreciate that, but he is different and he's, he definitely, when they came to Boise, um, at, they stood out like a sore thumb of Vlad and, and Edwin, you know, and, and Vlad, of course, he's got his dark sunglasses on. He's very, he's very, very New York. And so the people around here couldn't like, they were looking at him, you know, and it was hilarious. And I just laughed and, and I gave him a big hug and I said, you know, so I'm not intimidated by him. I'm not, I don't act any different around him, but I can totally see how people would because he is all business and he's very New York. He's very serious, but I love the guy. I get along with him. Great. I, he is serious. I'm like, Vlad, do you ever smile? I made him smirk right. one time. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> was something. You know, I said, he asked like me. That. He asked me for a shot one time we were getting a shot. And I said, well, I can't do that shot. And he goes, why? I said, I'm not wearing any underwear, Vlad. And he was just like, and he's just kind of like, oh, Christy. I was like, well, I'm not wearing any panties, all right? What do you want me to do? Like, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not doing that shot, you know? And so I'm always joking with him about, you know, and of course, you know, we have, we're a very red state here in Idaho and we have a lot of guns and I have a lot of guns. And so when he came into my condo and he sees all my guns, he was just like, what all, you know, Christy. So I'm very different to him and he's very different to me. Like we're just both so opposite, but we get along so well. We have a lot of respect for each other. I love the guy. I would work with him again. And that was the next question about your guns. Cause I love that you're a gun lover. You know, it's one of those things, not only, and you describe why you are too, which is a very important to the audience. You, you, you know, it's about your rights, but also about you being protected. Talk yes. about that. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a I'm a believer in the Constitution, and I'm I'm a I'm a proud American. I I back the blue. I support the military. I mean, that's never going to change. And we have our constitutional rights. And and you'll see that during the film, you'll see that conservative side comes come out in me. And I'd like to perhaps you know when Code Red's over, get into politics and move in that direction. And I I do, especially being a single girl. You know, I don't have I don't I'm not. I don't have a husband to protect me. And that's what men are there for. They're, they're there to protect and provide for. And I know that being a fighter and having my own money, I mean, a, a, a potential male would probably look at me and like, what does she need? But I, but I do need an alpha male, you know, but at, for the time being, I have, I have, I am very well armed. I am very proficient with weapons. I keep them at both my houses and I keep my head on a swivel. You know, I make sure that I'm always ready and, and I make sure I can run away if I need to. But yeah, I'm very, uh, very <laughs> pro-American, very pro-American, very pro-constitution. That's because the world has changed. You have to, yes. you have to. Yeah. And Rachel, your arms went up. I, I knew what that was like. <laughs> when she said yeah, about I, the I'm single single lady yeah too no I'm not married I mean I've, I've got cousin boyfriend but you know it's um I understand that we have to I'm you know and I'm in a home with two boys you know sons and I have to protect and I'm I live in a shady area it's not the best and I have to protect my home and I'm in Texas so yeah we you know everybody in Texas has guns you know you give your kids guns when they're like three you're like yeah oh, we're gonna use yeah you're gonna need it <laughs> So yeah, Christine, I'm all about it. I've been to Rachel's house. She doesn't live in a shady area. It's shady to, to Rachel, but it's not. I live in Mexico. It's a little town in Mexico called Houston. <laughs> hey, we got to talk about these inspirational movies because it's about inspiration too. Fitness inspiration, inspiration in general and having a second chance. So Jelly Roll, I really like Jelly Roll. I think I want to get him to what, what he's gone through. He's got a great documentary called Save Me. Because during lockdown, that song inspired a lot of people. You could catch it on Hulu. It's very, very good. And he's a great guy. And everybody still has their demons when, one way or another. So you got to fight through them, whatever it takes, going to the gym, going for walks with your dog, whatever the case is. You got to do this. And there's another one, Friends in Low Places, Garth Brooks on Amazon Prime. It's a great thing. And, you know, Howard, I'm sure you know, right there on Broadway, He's got his his bar there, which is great. And Rachel, the next time we go to Tennessee, we're gonna go there. Because I, you know, I haven't seen him in a long time. I want to go to the bar. Um, but again, these are great documentaries and one on Apple TV, Steve Martin, part one, part two. I had no idea I had so much in a line with this guy because, like you said, Christy, I've never been married. I've never, I don't have any kids. And the whole thing was I didn't I didn't and see Rachel Nels. I didn't sign up for that for a family. My thing is I'm a married bachelor to my career. So I can understand what you're talking about being that entrepreneur. That's most important to me. When I get on my ranch, 
then things will change. Then, you know, because I see these shady people coming that want to be with us. And I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't see that happen. No, that ain't going to happen. And but that was, a, that was the problem with my ex. We were together for 10 years. And as my career grew and as my company grew, he said, I didn't sign up for this. I don't want any mm -hmm. part of this. And that's why we went our separate ways. Exactly. And that's a whole nother, and that's a reason why you need to check this out. When is it, Christy? What's the date on it again? April 12th. Yep. Apple TV and Amazon Prime. And again, Vod makes great movies. We got a couple uh, minutes left. Rachel, what do you got coming up? Do you want anything with Fox? I do. I'm going to be work. Well, you know, I work with Fox every now and then whenever they call me. So Thursday, I think I'll be on with Fox. And um, I am reading a really good book now, Stories from the Road by Bill Wyatt It's He's so funny. This guy's always traveling. And this is I love his book, Stories from the Road. So it, it keeps me laughing. Um, but as far as movies and, 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 and um, what's going on with Netflix, there's so many good things out right now. There's one uh, body parts, three body mm -hmm. parts. Three body that parts one I'm enjoying a lot. It's got time travel. And I, I'm always digging the anything to do with time travel and, and stuff like that. Give your social media yeah. links. Oh, at Rachel Roberts recipes. Um, and you can find me every morning doing coffee. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Howard. 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 Uh, he Howard. probably can't, he probably can't hear us, but it's Howard Wiggins on Facebook. That's where he puts everything and mm -hmm. on Instagram and, uh, Twitter, I think he has too. And then Christy, give you social media links for everybody again. It's everywhere in the same, and it's always Christy Code Red. Mm -hmm. Inspiration. Boy, I'm going to give you the last word. What's a piece of inspiration that you use that the audience could would, would like to hear from you? I believe that um, my piece of inspiration would be that the world needs to hear what you have to say. And you have got to show up and all of you have in the deep, the, the depths of your soul, you have a message that you are not sharing because you're afraid of what people think. Believe me, when my hair was long and blonde and down to my butt, people hated it. When I had it in a mohawk, people hated it. Now people hate it. They hated it every color. They love it. Someone's always going to have a bull crap opinion about you and you cannot let that stop you. You've got to listen to that still small voice in your gut and you've got to show up and you got to live this life because the days slip into years and then what? You got to do it right now. I love women with short hair. I loved all your haircuts. So that was me. As soon as as soon as it came out, I'm like, oh, I love that one. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember when she had that one. I'm all about women with short hair because it's how you work it. You know how to work it. And I'm telling you that. And this is a straight black guy telling you that. You know how to work it. <laughs> Thank you. So when it comes to that, I got to mention Easy Way podcast because now we're on Easy Way. So we keep spreading everything out. Christy, talk about your book. Where can people go and buy your book? Yeah, it's called Rebel for Life, How to Break the re the Weight Regain Cycle. And um, there you can get it on Amazon right now that we don't really have. I haven't really I haven't really put it out there. So you guys are kind of the first to know about it. You can go to Amazon. You can just put in Rebel for Life. I've published a lot of books. I think this is my seventh, but this is my, uh, yeah, you can pick it up there. It's a great book. Really inspiring. And um I love anybody who's in that motivational speaking world because we need it. It's changed a lot, as you know. You got anything coming up on a motivation speaking side of things? I I don't. Do I? I don't. I think we're all just kind of um, we're all just kind of excited about the release of the film, and we're putting all of our eggs in that basket. All of our uh, all of our effort is going towards uh, promoting the film and making sure people and guys, when you get out and see the film when it comes out, that helps me a lot when you do that. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing that because I really want this film to be successful. So I don't think beyond that I have anything uh, that I've got booked uh, right now. We're just trying to get kind of past April twelfth. And so Rachel, there was a question for you. But what was your inspiration for cooking? Uh, what was your inspiration for cooking? And at what age did you start seeing questions? It, it keeps going and for Howard Wiggins and Christy. Okay. So I started cooking when I was, I, actually, my mom was a, an amazing cook. And so she always cooked these, every meal was fantastic. And I remember as a kid, it wasn't like, do you want this or do you want that? It was, this is what I made, eat it. And we ate it. And we loved it no matter what she made. And so when I grew up, I thought, oh God, I got to start, you know, cooking and I knew how to eat well. So that was my inspiration initially was my mother. 
Howard, if he can hear us. What was your inspiration? How what? How yeah, what? he can't hear us. He looks like Matthew Modine, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a good yeah. looking dude. He is. Christy, what yeah. was your motivation? What was my motivation? I, I don't know why I wasn't thinking of this while you guys were talking. Um, I I saw when I was a kid, I saw a muscular woman on TV. I'd never seen a muscular woman before because I grew up very sheltered as a sheltered uh, church kid. And I thought it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen as a woman with muscles. And I've always wanted to have muscles. I yeah. think women are beautiful, strong, alpha alpha females with muscles. And they take care of themselves and they, they care about their health. I think that is beautiful. And I always just had that in, ever since I was 13 in my mind, I want to be fit and healthy yeah. and have big muscles. Yeah. Well, you, you have done that and continued success to you because you worked your butt off for that. And congratulations getting on stage with those bikini models, because I wasn't interested in them. I was like, go Christian. I was interested in you. That's how we are. So I say this, thank you everybody for coming on and if, have a good night tonight, a better day tomorrow. If you see someone without a smile, please give them one of yours because the world needs it. Right, Christy? Yes, they do. And Absolutely. thank you, Gary, for watching. Mm -hmm. We love you, Gary. This is Brian Sebastian for Rachel, for Howard, for Christy, and we will see you next week.